Hey everybody, welcome to the Bat Community Call for Tuesday, August 13th, 2024. Hope you all are doing well. It's been a week. Um, and uh, you know, we're uh, we're we're all doing our thing. Um Excited to be going to Las Vegas this week uh, for the Rare Evo conference on Thursday. Uh, th- and I'm going to be on a panel on Saturday. Um, so if you all are going to be in the Vegas area this week, hit me up. And let's get together. Uh, a bunch of us are going to be there. I'm not going to steal the spotlight from what's probably in the slide deck where people talk about it. So I'll shut up there, but I'm looking forward to uh, getting to meet with uh, a lot of the different community and dApps and folks from Cardano, et cetera, um, while we're out there and uh, spreading the word about Brave and Bat. Um, yeah. So uh, what else have I got? Uh, we did a golf tournament last week with the founders tournament in uh, Pasadena and Brave and Bat were sponsors and participating. Um, we had two teams of four. My team was with uh, – we, we, we basically finished at par, and then the other team that we had from Brave uh, finished one under. But I think, like, the D-golfers guys were, like, minus 12 or something. But it was a good time. We met with a bunch of other projects there, uh, got some prospects and, and some interesting – potential stuff to cook up um, with some of the other folks there. And it was just awesome to uh, meet with the junior and and the D golfers and and everybody that was there. So um, super cool event. Um, Also we made some golf balls and swag and stuff. Um, DM if you're interested in getting some, I'm trying to see if we should get some for the uh, merch store. If people are interested in picking up that kind of thing, maybe we can do a limited run or something. Um, But yeah, so uh, uh, with that, I'll shut up and off to uh jenny welcome back thank you i'm happy to be back um apologies just give me a second here as always i have way too many tabs open you were missed. You're missed jenny my tab oh that but, makes me happy uh gear i'm was uh he he filled in nicely for you i think I heard. I heard he was a good MC in my absence. Um, yeah. That always makes me very delighted to hear. But I, I knew the team would do a great job without me. Wasn't worried. All right. Uh, I think I've located the tab. Okay. So let's let's hop in. Um, actually, just give me ten seconds more. I just want to make sure that the broadcast is broadcasting. It is. Okay. We're good. Okay. Let's dive in. So uh, this week, I wanted to follow up on the collaboration that Bat and Brave did with Wen and Moonwalk Fitness, which we launched, or they kicked off, I should say, they kicked off their challenge uh, a few weeks ago at the start of the Paris 2024 Olympics. And uh, we decided to participate alongside them by getting our community involved in the challenge. Um, So just a little, to back it up a little bit, Moonwalk Fitness, for anyone who may not know, is a fitness accountability app. It allows you to track your daily steps, um, enter various Um, games or uh, tournaments with other participants and um, share in prize pools, um, crypto prize pools. They do USDC prize pools, Sol, and this time there was a bonus prize pool provided by Brave. We provided uh, about $2,000 worth of SPL bat. So I think it was about 10,000 SPL bat or something. And then Wen also put in some Wen coin for the bonus prize pool. So um, if you were here a couple of weeks ago, we we went in depth into you know how the challenge worked, how it functioned. Um, we had Caitlin, Caitlin Cook from Moonwalk Fitness come onto the call and answer some questions and just you know give folks sort of an overview about what it is that they do at Moonwalk Fitness and their goals. And we also shared about how we were going to be promoting not only the Step for Gold Challenge, but also Moonwalk Fitness more generally through Brave Ads. And um, I don't have all of the results from their campaign that we ran for them. But Caitlin is putting together a write-up about the lift that they received from Brave Ads and how the Step for Gold challenge went, generally speaking. And I have a few details on that that I want to share, but I uh, just wanted to you know, follow up on that, let everybody know that the challenge is now 
finished. If you participated, you know that it ended on the last day of the Olympics, which was two days ago. And um, actually here, I have some more details here that I can run through. So um, so yeah, the, the, the challenge ran from July 26th to August 11th. It was uh, 16 or I think I made a mistake. I think it was a 16, no, it was 17 days, 17 day long challenge. Uh, the goal was to hit a daily step count of 10,000 steps per day. People who wanted to participate had to put in $10 worth of USDC as their stake. And then insofar as you hit your daily 10K step count, you remained in the running to split the prize pool at the end. So currently the challenge is finalizing. If you participated and you log into your Moonwalk Fitness account, you'll see uh, that it says finalizing alongside the top of the challenge. Um, and anybody who is eligible for a prize, meaning, Actually, I think I made a mistake just now with what I said. As long as you completed your your 10K steps um, most days throughout the challenge, you are still eligible to claim a portion of the prize pool. And I've been informed by Moonwalk Fitness that that will become available for you to claim via a claim button in your dashboard later today. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I participated. We had Drew. Uh, Batern and a couple other folks from the team participating. We had some bad ambassadors taking part as well. We had a lot of fun competing with each other and sharing screenshots of our daily step count. And I think everybody was really excited about the potential to earn bat for doing something, you know, physical and real. We haven't really done that before, like bridge bat into the real world. Uh, there have been a couple, you know, cases um, of it happening organically without our help um, in the past, but this was really cool, fun, and different for us. And um, we hope that the folks who did get to participate had a lot of fun. And I hope that we get to continue working with Moonwalk um, to do this again in the future. We can continue sponsoring some of these games because they're great. Um, and, you know, we're all chronically online people. So it's nice to be able to like, you know, step on concrete, touch grass and like get some steps in and get back for doing that. Right. I can't read the chat right now, but hopefully the feedback's positive. <laughs> That's fantastic. No. And I think that, uh, you know, Caitlin's great. Um, it's a great project. I'm also going to be uh, having her on the podcast too. I think we're recording this Wednesday too, but um, yeah, it was really cool. It was cool to see you all get so involved. And I know that one launched when I was away and um, just really awesome and stoked that Caitlin said it did so well too. Excited for her write up. Yeah. And, and honestly, it was a really sort of, we had to, turn it around really quickly. Um, I think you left on like a Friday evening and, you know, like it kind of came up at the last minute and we only had a couple of days to start promoting it and to set up the campaign and get it going and also get the community participating. Um, but I really think that if we do this again, like we could probably get a lot more people from our side involved. And I'm sure there are brave team members who would want to get involved. Like I know our CTO, Brian Bondi is a runner. Like he would probably want to get involved in this challenge. Um, I'm sure it'd be fun for him and a lot of others. So, um, so yeah, let's do it again. And as soon as Moonwalk publishes the write up about the campaign and the um, the challenge, we'll be sure to share it with you all. I think Bondi does like ten thousand steps before breakfast or something. Like, I believe he's it. <laughs> yeah, he's he's really uh, incredible. Um, and then I just want to show off sort of what the dashboard looks like and the leaderboard for Moonwalk Fitness. I don't even think these are the top folks. I was like partway down when I screen capped this, but like there are some people who participated. I don't think these top guys are from our community. These must be from the Moonwalk Fitness side, but like some of these folks are get banking like 30, 40,000 steps a day. So they must be runners because uh, there were days where I walked almost all day and I had like 18,000 steps. So um, but anyway, it was a lot of fun. And um, like I said, I, I really hope that we get to do it again. It's nice to um, bridge bat utility to the real world. Okay, um, next I wanted to talk a little bit about our ongoing partnership with Unfungible. You all know we've spoken about it many times, but they're a Web3 media company that help um, other Web3 projects um, grow and scale specifically around um, engagement and participation for Twitter or X spaces. So we've been working with them for 11 weeks now. Um, we ran a little pilot. It was, you know, an experimental session with them where we wanted to, you know, test out spaces with them for 
seven sessions and see how that went. And we we loved it. We got really good uh, feedback, great engagement on those spaces. And so we've just continued on. And uh, I covered uh, the Wrapped with Unfungible on the community call last month in, in June, but we've just received some new statistics from them um, about our spaces throughout July. So I wanted to cover them together today. So, like I just said, we've done a total of 11 spaces with Unfungible, which is awesome. Um, we have a handful more planned. And as far as we're, you know, we had a, a call with them this morning, and I think these will probably continue into the into the far future. We're really enjoying working with them. They have taken the guesswork out of organizing spaces for us. They are responsible for getting panelists from, from other projects. Like they have a, a huge repertoire, not a huge repertoire, but they have quite a repertoire of Web3 clients that they work with and they're currently uh, recruiting more. So we have varied panelists every week. Um, we also have the entire Bat community team on the panel every week. And, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm dog sitting right now. <laughs> sorry, everybody. <laughs> Oh, sorry, just give me just give me a quick second. Sorry, guys. It's okay. It's a family show. Dogs are welcome. Uh, also, I, I mean, while we have uh, while we're talking about Unfungible, um, Andrew Forte is one of the um, one of the the founders of Unfungible, and he's been a big contact of ours. Actually, running a pilot, he kicked off a podcast. Um, I'll put it in the chat, but um, it was one of those things where. Um, he started the podcast like after we had started working with them and I was like, dude, check it out. We've been doing these pilots with podcasts. I'd love to kind of show you what we can do. And uh, we're, we're about halfway in, but um, he had some videos that were at like 130 or so views when we started. And within a couple of days, we had them over a couple thousand. So it's pretty impressed there. And like, he has some really good ideas for um, how we can have uh, creators using brave ads to help grow up their podcast and stuff. So Good brainstorming coming from that, and um, and yeah, but Andrew's great. I'll put his uh, link in the chat, folks. Check him out. Um, you did a good one with Luca uh, from Pudgy Penguins, um, which is one of the ones we ran that pilot campaign with, and I think he had another one. You can tell, like whichever videos he has, that have like a couple thousand or more of the ones that we ran. But um, but yeah, I just buying some times here. Uh, are you back, Jenny? Or are you still uh, on the canine uh, patrol? Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry All right, cool, cool. Don't worry. <laughs> we have maintenance coming in and out of uh, the apartment, and the dog goes crazy every single time. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, I missed everything that you said. I don't know if you filled in uh, any details. Or... No, I just shared about um, the the pi podcast pilot stuff we're doing with Andrew since he uh, was out of the oh, cool. So I didn't go any deeper than that. Um, and uh, yeah, and I put his uh, channel in the chat for folks that want to. Um, Give it a like and subscribe or take a look at his videos because they're pretty good. And I'm going to be doing an interview on his podcast, too, I think, in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Definitely check Andrew out, everyone. He's um, awesome, um, super smart guy, and he's uh, Canadian, just like me. <laughs> OK, so let's move on. So here um, is a recap of some of the spaces that we hosted throughout the month of July. Uh, I won't read you all the titles. Many of you probably participated or listened to the recordings. Um, but you know, we do different topics every week, always Web3 related. Um, it's always a good time. We always have very insightful guests on the panel. We have some recurring guests, but a lot of new guests each week. So um, you know, if you want to take part in uh, web discussions about various Web3 topics, or you see a topic that is interesting to you, please hop in. Um, you're always welcome to raise your hand throughout the, during the space and come up with a question, or uh, our host, Sansa, is really good at reading questions out of the, not the chat, but you know, the, 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 the area where you can comment beneath the space when it's live. So, um, so yeah, um, join us and come get your voice heard and participate in, in these awesome weekly discussions. And if you haven't joined yet, um, I've just got a like fangirl about our host for a second. He's like the most high energy, fun person. Um, we've had multiple spaces working with Unfungible. We had Kellino previously, who is the best of the best. And then we have Sansa now, who's just like a ball of energy and makes every conversation enjoyable and gets everybody laughing. And it's nice on a Friday. It's just, um, you know, it's, an, it's nice. It's a nice place to come decompress 
while having a hopefully insightful but not too serious conversation. Um, and then here are some of the brands that ha that have either joined us or that we've joined on their spaces. Um, oh my gosh, these logos. <laughs> I don't know them <laughs> off the top of my head, but the, the top left is Forbes Web3 that I can tell you. And they've all been great. And they have a combined total of 10 million followers, which is pretty awesome. Um, we've also had over 700,000 total impressions on our spaces throughout the month of July alone. That's huge. That's way more than we had seen historically um, when we were organizing spaces ourselves. So very significant lift here that we've received since working with Unfungible and you know we're we're just elated to see it getting that exposure oh so what was that they're getting that exposure i think like it's part of one of the cool things about doing this is that you know since we're hosting the spaces from the bad account to like we're, we've been seeing a whole new wave of people uh come in and ask questions like um even the um the podcast i did last week the solo episode like i had people dming me about it that are like hey you know i've uh normally like engineering or product stuff and like just asking questions about bat which is super cool so i think that you know doing these is pretty pretty awesome and important to uh keep the keep the ball rolling on exposure yeah it definitely is and actually we had a really good call with unfungible this morning and they were mentioning that um you know they they also have been noticing like an influx of new interest in Web3 and, you know, projects that are building in Web3 um, in this current cycle more so than they've seen in the past. And they actually proposed, and we still need to discuss this sort of as a team, but I guess I'll share it here and see if people have any thoughts, but doing a second uh, space session each week with them. So, you know, we have the Friday session with Sansa, which is, um, which is always interesting, but it's a little lighter. Um, and they were, they were suggesting that, you know, we make the attention token account sort of a hub for this new wave of panelists that they're receiving, like these, these web three builders, um, who are like super interesting and a little more technical. Um, and so they proposed hosting like a weekly, you know, more technical or like stats based discussion, um, earlier in the week, Monday or Tuesdays, and then doing the Friday space, which is like a little lighter, a little more fun. Um, and sort of like giving us the opportunity to be like the, the account that they bring all their new panelists and guests to. Um, and I thought that was really, um, I, I was really flattered that they offered that to us. And I, I think um, that would probably be really great for engagement and bringing in, you know, new fans as well. If you guys have any thoughts, leave them in the chat and I'll check when I um, move away from this screen. But uh but yeah, so yeah, just to, to, to summarize here, uh, we hosted five spaces with Unfungible throughout the month of July. And we also had our panelists attend um, spaces with Unfungible clients. So Luke has done a few, I've done one or two, Drew, Guillermo, Batern uh, have all sat on, have all been guests on Unfungible client panels. So yeah, we're really getting out there in a way that we haven't before. Um, and as you can see, the numbers speak for themselves. So yeah, we are excited to continue um, working with Unfungible. And, uh, you know, as always, y'all, if there are any guests um, in the space that you want to see on one of our panels or uh, yeah, participating in our discussions, let us know because we can bring them to Unfungible and see what we can work out. All right, and then um, Bat Earn is out this week, but I wanted to give a quickie little Bat Ambassadors program update. Um, so we're currently exploring a few synergies and collaboration opportunities. None of these are set in stone, but I just wanted to share them because our ambassadors are always bringing really great ideas to the table. And so these are some that uh, we're kind of excited about and we're hoping that we can you know, get something going. So uh, Akshar, one of our new ambassadors from season four, um, has been speaking or has a friend who is a volunteer for Hack CBS 7.0, which is India's largest student-run hackathon. Um, and it 
it brings in over 11,000 participants from 350 colleges across 25 countries, which is huge. Um, it's sponsored by Microsoft, Logitech, and some other big names in tech. And um, you know, Brave has a very sizable user base in India, and uh, you know, we've historically um, sponsored hackathons, sent teams to hack at hackathons, um, and since we have people on the ground there in India, it, you know, there is potentially an opportunity to to either sponsor or figure out some kind of you know barter situation. Um, you know, we could always use the opportunity to scout for young talent. That's what these hackathons are really great for that. Um, we could have students hack on new applications for BAT. Um, just, just some ideas. Um, we're kind of working through it and seeing what is feasible, but um, just wanted to highlight that here. A good lead from Akshar. Also, we have Adamac and Exodus from Nigeria currently um, talking to CoreDAO, which is a platform that enables building with EVM compatible smart contracts on um, like a Bitcoin network. Um, and so we're in the process of planning an X Spaces event with them. And then um, Adamac and Exodus are trying to organize a meetup at a local college with them in Nigeria. And then in addition, we have uh, Donatello from Mexico, who is interested in attending ETH Mexico. I believe he attended it last year. Um, he, we sent him with a team of hackers. Um, and you know, while they're there, they will obviously hack, um, maybe on some bat related stuff. They'll do lead generation, they'll get browser referrals, and they'll distribute merch. Um, and then also we have our content creator, Crypto Dojo, aka Scott, or Scott, aka Crypto Dojo, working on a new video series about BAT and um, its utility within the Brave browser, but also its various applications and utilities beyond Brave. So it's just some of the cool stuff we have going on. Uh, there's much more, but difficult to cover it all um, without monopolizing the entire call. So yeah, just wanted to shout out these cool initiatives and um, you know, we'll, we'll keep updating you as things progress. And that is it for me. I'm going to hand it over to Drew now. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jenny. Um, yeah, so like Luke mentioned, I think Jenny too, uh, we'll be at the, the Rare Evo um, conference going on uh, this week in Vegas. And um, looking forward to that. So we'll be there. Uh, some of the other projects that are involved there's Cardano, Thorchain, Alran, Ronin um etc cetera, etc cetera. a bunch of other ones uh, so it should be um like axie infinity i guess um anyways um so that one should be fine should be good hopefully we'll get um to meet a bunch of new people uh, this is kind of one of those projects where like different projects so um that i haven't met a whole lot of people from so far at least me i don't know about the luke and carlos and jenny but uh, so I'm excited to kind of expand that a little bit um, from the normal stuff. And then uh, just looking at the, the rewards went out for this month. So you should have got those if you got them, um, including, you know, the um, on-chain rewards for those that are on there. And then um, kind of mentioned already Spaces Trivia, et cetera, is still going on weekly uh, and possibly doing some more, like Jenny mentioned. And then we're kind of been talking to a few other um, projects on doing some collabs and, and exchanges and things like that. And once we got, you know, something a little more concrete, we'll, we can maybe share on some of those. But some of them, uh, you know, look pretty good, look promising, and what could be really good. Uh, so looking forward to that. And I think that's pretty much all I got. A little slower in the summertime here, revving up for school and stuff. So thanks. Hi everyone, um, happy Tuesday. I shared this last week, but I wanted to share it kind of, um, kind of like a reminder. Um, so starting tomorrow until Thursday, Wilfredo, our ambassador, our bad ambassador from Colombia will be representing Brave at the Blockchain Summit Latam conference in Bogota, Colombia. Um, unfortunately, Donatello, another ambassador, but from Mexico was going to attend, but he had some complications traveling to um, to Medellin in time for the for the event. However, like Jenny said, he will be at another event next month in Mexico, which is if if Mexico. Um, so again, 
Wilfredo will be focusing on browser downloads through the QR code, um, secret distribution, and he will seek for potential Brave Ads campaigns in LATAM. Um, but yeah, if any of you are going to, to attend and are interested to collab or, or partner with us, you can DM Wilfredo to connect, to connect with him there. Next, uh, thank you. So um, more LATAM updates. Um, so the localization for self-serve ads is done for now, but we'll keep updating the platform UI and the help center when the tool crowded, um, I mean crowding kind of um, notifies us. So we'll work on that. Um, another, another thing is that we keep seeking for opportunities with brands in LATAM to run ad campaigns. And we are in the process of making that happen if everything goes well, but we are going to do some tests first. And also, we plan to start creating content again. <laughs> creating, we plan to start creating content again, um, especially, um, I mean, specifically in, in, in Spanish, like kind of like education, educational, promotional, and informative short videos about um, different features or collabs with Web3 projects, which, um, which can be easier for people to understand them, like, um, if we share instructions or just explain how the partnership is going to work. And also the Web3, um, kind of like the Web3 guides or information you can find um, on the Brave websites, but like a, like a short video. So I'll start working on that with, with Jenny very soon. And that's all from my side. Thank you. Hey, hey. Good morning, good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. My name is Godson and I have your African Ambassadors update for the week. Um, so uh, just to, like, you know, continue the um, conversation we had last week about a couple uh, events and leads and stuff like that. Uh, I finally got uh, the assets that we needed for the um, East Safari campaign today. Um, and, you know, I was about to pass it along to uh, you know Cheryl, who I usually bother. She's she's not around for like another week, so <laughs> um, you know. Yeah, I would. I don't know, Luke, if you can help me. Uh, oh, you, know, you need some around. help with uh, yeah. getting something up. Uh, well, yeah, I got. Um, uh, I can tap in another uh, another one from Ops too to help. Yes, please. You know, I mean, I could just you know DM them or whatever, but you know they're not gonna they're not gonna respond to some you know random. Uh, guy in the company. So, You're Godson. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I've been I've been trying to get a, a a brave email for like three months now. So you know maybe maybe Godson isn't uh, really all that. Uh, oh come on. Okay. <laughs> I will. Uh, yeah. I'll, we'll, we'll once we're off today, I will uh, I will connect you with uh, with another person from my team who can help. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So basically, that's the. Um, you know, I need I, I need to be able to um, have you know someone help out with the East Safari campaign, um, the cyber chain ca uh, campaign as well. Even uh oh, ah, we lost you, Godson. I thought it was me. I didn't know. No, he's frozen. Ah. Well, hey, I mean, if he needs help <laughs> with campaigns, that means that things are working. But... Hey. Oh, you're back. Yeah, yeah. My apologies. I have no idea. I pay all this money for Wi-Fi, and they still won't make it work. Um, so, yeah. Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So you were saying, I think when it cut off, you were saying that um, you, you were saying you had a campaign for East Safari we need to get up, and then uh, Cyber Chain too? Yeah, yeah, Cyber Chain. But that would come a little bit later because the, the actual um, event is in October. Whereas eSafari is in like a month, actually less than a month. It's on September the 9th, or something like that. So, um, you know, we need to get up, get the eSafari campaign going literally ASAP, and then the cyber chain you know, campaign like a month from now. Um, yeah, and then finally, uh, like Jenny mentioned earlier, Adamac wants to do an event. Um, I've asked him to, you know, fill out the form, but I just wanted to, uh, bring up the fact that you know he wants 
but I, I've, I've asked him to, you know, fill out the form and, and all that good stuff. So hopefully Jenny will see it and, um, you know, decide what happens. Um, yeah, I chatted with him a little bit yesterday and uh, he's he's going to be passing along a proposal very soon. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I asked him to fill out the form, but I don't know if it's still the old form or the new one. So uh, either way, I, I'm, I'm glad he uh, was able to get to you. Um, Coming up with the leads updates, um, the Bing X campaign was supposed to start this week, but they uh, got back to me said, essentially they, they wanna do something else bigger. Um, if you remember Luke, when I asked about the um, the uh, wallet numbers, that's why they they are, you know, everybody's launching like a DEX now. So they're gonna be launching a, a DEX too to, um, you know, compete with the uh, Bybit DEX and, and that kind of stuff. So they wanted to uh, promote that. That's interesting. So that's a trend you're seeing, like uh, more DEX is launching. Oh. Bummer. Is that just me? I see my thing moving. Nah, we lost him again, I think. Oh, man. I'm pumped for rare Evo, Drew. Yeah, should be should be good. Vegas. Yes, sir. I'm gonna shoot myself. I swear. Don't shoot yourself. I'm, For God's I'm, sake. Literally, I'm literally just gonna. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna join again for my uh, other. Oof. You're good, man. Phone. Yeah, ba basically they want to do a bigger campaign. They want to launch a Dex, and you know, so it's going to be like another time. I also, I also spoke to the uh, head of growth at CoinCatch. That's a campaign that's also going to come out soon. So hopefully everything works out, and you know we can get all the other stuff rolling. And then finally, we have a, a New Zealand community that probably will launch hopefully next week after I clear it with every, everybody. Uh, it'll be just a good way to organize our raids and signal boosting like you know our uh, online stuff um you know like if we need like some twitter community stuff or or you know not not everyone is in the bad brigade um uh group chat on on twitter so you know it's just a, like a way to like ex like expand the the you know community's ability to uh signal Oh. Hey, you got oh, to keep the uh, screen on. Is that what it is? Now there's two godsends. Yeah, yeah. I, I figured if, if the computer is not going to respond properly, I'm just going to. I'm just going to talk on my phone. So, right. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you guys. See you next week. <laughs> All right, Godson. Oh, my God. <laughs> All good, my man. Uh, yeah, uh, Stan is here. I think he wants to say something. He just DM me. So, and yeah, the man. Hey, Luke. Hi, What's Hi. happening? Man? Uh, I'm doing well. Awesome. Yeah, just hoping for the Eight Safari uh, campaign to go through, because if it goes through, it means now we can have some more ads coming from because they can. Nice more events, eat events in Africa. And then it's going to be a plus for us. And we can have more paid for ads coming for the more eat events. Yeah. Apparently, it's the biggest event in Africa. Yeah. Thank you. That's fantastic, Stan. Do good work on that. And uh, I will get you and Godson hooked up with my team right away so we can get that launched. Uh, um, as soon as possible. I'm already actually you, texting, texting folks Thank while we are doing it. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks for being standing, man. Yeah. One last thing. We we found one extra person for the uh, tickets, but we still have one more to um, give away. So if anybody is interested, if you're in um, if you're in the region or if, or if you want to go visit uh, Kenya and do a little safari, we have one more ticket as well. Don't sleep on that. 
safaris are great. So yeah, that's it for me. Uh, passing it back to to Jen. Uh, sorry about the uh, net, net, network issues. I will uh, I'll, instead of shooting myself, I'll I'll go shoot AT and T instead. <laughs> <laughs> Holster that godsend. Uh, no, that's great. No need to apologize, and don't joke about that. We need you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, that's that's it for us this week. Um, we have Bat Earn is um, out until tomorrow, and then Guillermo is out for the rest of the week. So shorter update today, but uh, hopefully you guys liked it, and we'll keep you updated on all of our progress next week. Thanks. Back to you, Luke. Fantastic. No, that's great set of updates. I know it's summer, and people are doing summer things, but um, you know it's always good to. Uh, just, see the work and the progress going. I mean, like, especially to like seeing some of this conference stuff. I think that's one other thing too, you know, um, even for ambassadors or for anybody that's listening to this, uh, if there are regional meetups or conferences or whatever, um, we are happy to do things like, um, like people saw with Rare Evo where we, uh, we showed, you know, the sponsored image of, the event to get more people there. They actually gave us some really good um, feedback. They said they saw a lot of traffic coming from uh, those placements on those days. And so um, we have, you know, we have uh, ways that we can, you know, exchange value to help make those things happen and get promotion for the events and show them what we can do too. Um, and so don't be shy if there's stuff that uh, you'd like to see us at um, and you'd like to rep for uh, Brave and Bat from the community or whatever, like um, hit us up and we can help to coordinate to make that happen. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, you know, the more the barrier. I also kind of like joined the ambassadors call last week and uh, and the uh, the community lead call last week too. And um, I just want to kind of talk for a couple of minutes. I think uh, there, there's a bunch of cool stuff happening with ambassadors with like organizing around getting more engagement going. Um, I think people saw the unfungible stuff here where we're getting more exposure out and then, and then doing more things like karate combat where, I mean, just, you know, it's a, a pretty awesome thing. I think we were seeing, they had like 29 million impressions on one of the Instagram posts and, you know, we're getting exposure through Joe Rogan through that. These types of things are pretty awesome um, to be doing. And a lot of this is bubbling up through community. So I think there's, there's two kinds of things that I'm looking at right now that would be super cool, like to, get people involved with. Um, and, and I know people are already doing these things too, but um, sometimes it helps to just hear it and, uh, and, and hear that people are interested in, in having this, uh, you know, having more of this type of thing. But I think, you know, there's kind of two buckets, right? Like there's one bucket of, of organization where, you know, people do in real life meetups, which are fantastic. And, and I think that that's an important thing to do. Um, and it's kind of like a staple in crypto community building. Um, but, but, you know, there's also a lot more effort involved with, with kind of organizing and stuff like that. Um, and, and one area that I think we should like double or triple down in is like kind of looking at ways that we can get people to post and engage more on Brave and Bat. Um, a lot of every one of us are using Brave and utilizing Bat. And I think that like it's one of those things where we don't have to have a ton of people posting all the time, but but getting several more does make a significant difference. And um, one thing I was talking about with, with Batterne and, uh, and, and the rest of the group too, and Jenny as well, uh, Drew, et cetera, was like, um, you know, I've got a bunch of the bad NFTs too. And I think we're going to look at like how we can make kind of like a rank advancement along the lines of like um, maybe there could be like a raid channel in, in the discord or something. And, you know, based on where you post there, like, you know, you can make rank advancements. We can do things like, you know, I can hook up people with NFTs or I think I have a bunch of DJ Royale ones too. Um, and bad earned get me an address to like send a bunch of those too. But um, I'm happy to, as long as people keep like, you know, moving up in the ranks, like sweep the floor and get more, um, NFTs to people so more people have them and uh, and also just like other ways that we can reward that because I think you know it, it's uh, it, it's important to have more voices out there and uh, a, a word of mouth has always been like a really significant growth driver for Brave and Bat because you know once people are on they're on um, and I think that uh, you know, there's just two other parts of this too and like kind of risks I think that we run with these types of things and one is just that like people don't see when people are posting. So like you don't get as much like reach off of that or support or whatever. And so 
that's what I was kind of mentioning. I know that I think we have a raid channel in, in the Bat Brigade Discord, but if we don't, we should put one there and have it be like the place where people can count the engagement so that like it's super clear and transparent, but also because like once somebody posts in there, like everybody else can raid on that post and basically, you know, whether it's like, you know, uh, uh, liking or retweeting or, or having something to say. I mean, I've been sitting in a lot of these um, meme coin communities over the past year and a lot of them are just like people have like memes at the ready they jump in on and it's actually like it, it, the, the numbers were tracking it and it was like dude like the, the increases on rated posts are like pretty significant so I think it's something where like people too feel like if you have people on the team supporting in that way like it's not just getting more exposure for everybody but it's also like kind of team building and bonding etc um, the other part of this too that I want to cover is like you know we have a lot of product here, like in, it's not all super easy to explain sometimes, or, you know, if people come at it from weird angles with FUD and other things like that, or there might just be parts that people are really familiar about and not familiar about. And I think like, you know, with this engagement, social posting and stuff like that, one thing we want to really make sure that we, we don't leave people hanging. If, if people are coming with FUD, that's like, you know, easy, easy to defend or worth defending or whatever. Like, um, there are two things I think we could do on that front. Like one is just make a set of talking points with like counter to, to those things. And some of these things, people just kind of like, you know, once you've gone through the round, you, you, you have your own punch list or whatever, which is cool. Um, but then the other thing too, is that like, you know, I'm around like on X and, uh, and other team members are too. Like if people are, uh, you know, unsure about something or you get some piece of FUD reply that you can like easily swat down, but aren't quite sure whether what you're posting is hundred percent accurate or whatever, like, don't be shy on that stuff. Like whether you put it in like a raid channel, like, Hey, help me back me up on this. Or like, um, we should add this to a list of counterpoints or whatever. Like, um, that stuff's super helpful or like worst case, like if you don't want to do that, just like hit me up too. Like I'm happy to jump in where needed, um, when I'm online. Like, uh, and so, uh, it, I think like, you know, I, I'll, I can pause there, but I, I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Cause it's something where like a lot of us are online anyway. And, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's something that's not, it's quite as big of a lift as doing like some in real life events or things like that. But you'd be surprised like how you don't have to have a ton of people doing this to like get a lot of exposure. And one of the things I mentioned in the ambassadors call last week, it was like on that whole murderous day, I think Monday of last week when the whole uh, Japan carry trade stuff was happening and, and everything was tanking like 20 plus percent. Um, and, you know, when these things happen, the great thing about brave and bat is that like, we've gone through the cycles, we have real product, millions of people are using it. Um, and like, those are moments that are standout moments. Like it sounds, I mean, like I felt like kind of like a mental patient, but I was, you know, out there kind of bull posting when this was happening. Cause honestly, like those things don't really shake me very much now. Cause I know we're going to be here and keep growing and, you know, we've got our community here and, um, and that community is just going to grow and more and more people, you know, engage with the product and, and, you know, see the wins and uh as the story goes on etc but um you know i i it, it, those times are when stuff flushes out and we're still here and you know the market's eventually going to you know recognize that um more than you know just having the foresight of a uh i don't know some short-term memory animal or whatever but um point being is just that like look like we're all together in this and um we're here to support too. Like if people are getting challenged or people are getting funded or whatever, like I'm always uh, somebody you can come to, but so is everybody else on the team. And I, and I would hope the broader community too. Um, and also like, we just would love to see what people are tweeting because, you know, I was talking to Jenny about this, like, we've all been in this game for a long time. Like we're in the weeds and the Kool-Aid, all that good stuff. Like we know it works for us, but like one of the greatest things about, these new waves of ambassadors and when we get new community members on and from some of this new exposure is just like seeing how people think about what we're doing and how they post about it. So I think we can learn a lot from everybody who's listening to this that posts stuff and, and just kind of their point of view. Cause one of the challenges with what we do is that, you know, it's all kind of, we get really 
wordy and complicated and you know sometimes like i even see this with batter and he's just like dude just like no adverts and print bat like super simple and it's like you know what like it is pretty simple like you know we we could dumb this down quite a bit and left curve it or whatever you want to call it but like sometimes you need those reminders and sometimes getting fresh perspective not sometimes most of the time getting fresh perspective is super helpful and it's all stuff we the the team sees too so um i've just been talking a lot but uh, happy to open up for questions or topics or whatever it can be about anything um and uh would love to hear what you all think while we wait for questions if nobody yeah. has any um yeah i just want to jump in and uh, sort of dovetail on some of the stuff that you said. Uh, I definitely hear and agree with everything that you put down. Um, but at the same time, um, I got to give many of our ambassadors their flowers. We've got so many people uh, and we see you all running your regional bat social media accounts. So, you know, we've got like that bad France, bad Netherlands, bad India, like that brave Kenya, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you guys are posting all the time and we love to see it. Um, and we, you know, we always try to retweet and, uh, you know, pin, pin your awesome um, overviews from your events to our, our highlights on the back community account. But um, yeah, to Luke's point, like there are tons of new people funneling into our community and lots of them have questions and feedback and, uh, you know, a lot of it, uh, well, not a lot of it, but some sometimes it's FUD. And yeah, don't be shy. You are an ambassador, you're a representative. And so people will automatically, you know, you, you have like, just by virtue of like your profile pic and the account and its association to ours, like you'll, you know, you will be taken seriously. Um, and if you need help crafting a reply, like we're always, we're always here to help you out. Um, but, you know, oftentimes like you guys have really good responses of your own and great takes. And, uh, you know, we want to empower you to, we want to empower you to feel empowered to respond to these things. And, and even like, um, positive feedback from fans. Like I, I see like Belladone and Drew and Bows uh, and others, um, responding to positive feedback oftentimes on X, which is really nice too. So yeah, just like keep it up. And um, of course, we we want to see more of it. And um, if we can like gamify this, like Luke was saying, you know, we have through the raids channel. And I know we already have with within the ambassadors program, we have the ranking system, we have special user flares, we have Zealy, where you can win XP points for uh, doing various things online, participating in raids and sharing posts and sharing news. And uh, but maybe we can gamify this further, make it more fun and uh, make it more engaging for everyone. And um, I know many of you have been with us for a couple of seasons as we've sort of like developed this whole like incentive system for this whole thing. Um, but we're always uh, open and amenable to new feedback and ways that we can make this like more enjoyable or um, em empower you better, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, the shout out to Belladon and uh, Aaron Yakati for the great um, recaps of these calls. It's super cool. Love it. Yes. Seabray. No, uh, last week you teased out a little bit about uh, the new uh, batch of people being invited for uh, on-chain payments, but I knew you were still trying to get some details. Is that anything else that we have yet, or is that yet to come? To be uh, yeah, so I spoke with Chris last week. Uh, they're preparing for the wave. I don't know exactly what date it's going to start rolling out, but it is going to be big, like a lot. Like I think around a fifth of the rewards uh, addressable users will be um, included in this. So it should be like really significant as far as like um, the amount of people that will get captures to join uh, to to get the on-chain part and that's kind of what we're hoping for like i mean uh, i don't personally don't want to see this drag out forever because i want as many people to be using it as we can but there's also some pretty practical things that the team's doing as they learn from each one of these payments um but i think like it, it was really cool to see that uh such a huge cohort is going to get invited on the next one and uh, I spoke with Chris too about like countries and, and, and preferences around that. And um, I really drove it in that like, you know, it's, it's, it's really key to get the folks in that lost support um, at along the way uh, when 
one or both of the custodians um, no longer supported their country. So I heard Germany is going to be included um, in this one and, and several others uh, that, that we've heard a lot of feedback from people that um, haven't been able to play. So uh, they'll, they'll be uh, hopefully included. Um, and yeah, like super excited for more and more people to get this and, and get onboarded um, through it. So hope that helps um, put some color to it. Yeah, awesome. So definitely um, works on that. And do you know if they've ever changed? Like, will it send invites to anybody that's connected to like an uphold, or does it only send invites to on-chain rewards for people that are not connected? Yeah, it's prioritized for people that aren't connected um, because, like, kind of we want to make sure that. Uh, like I was saying, like a bunch of those users uh, got unlinked, right, when the, the regions weren't supported, but also just from kind of zero to wanting it, like starting with those and then and then kind of working through other complexities later, like um, where you've got a user, you got to make sure they don't, you know, link for multiples and, and things like that. Um, uh, but But yeah, it'll be unlinked first. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And so if you folks are watching the recording of this or whatever, um, make sure that you have Brave Rewards enabled. Um, that way, uh, if you're unlinked and enabled, um, part of that process is, you know, kind of you, you should get a CAPTCHA and then kind of kicks things off to, to onboard um, with, as a linked uh, user. Um, and yeah, from there on, it's pretty, pretty smooth. So i um, excited to get that in front of more and more people. Harold Spencer, man, how are you doing? It's awesome to see you here. Or whoever I'm hey. using, like, hey, how's it going, my man? Good, how are you? I'm good, good. Hi, everybody. Um, one of the things that people criticize that about is uh, the privacy aspect of the coin, of the token. Um, Will on-chain rewards help that, or how can we make the token more, like, uh, or can we make the token more, like, Monero or uh, pirate, pirate, can, pirate coin or, uh, or the cash? Yeah, that's well, a great. Well, I can reward help that. That's a great question. I think um, on-chain rewards are not going to make it more private uh, because you're, you know, claiming it from an address. But, but that said, I think like one of the things that I'm pretty excited about uh, is, and, and I was actually looking at this before the call today. Um, because I was doing some double checking, but um, the progress that's happening on the Zcash integration in, in the wallet uh, is, is uh, I'm seeing a lot of progress happening toward that. And one of the interesting things about that is that they're working on these like shielded transactions um, that you can do, uh, you'll be able to do from the wallet, which will add a whole level of like private transactions and, and you'll be able to send memos and things like that um, privately. Um, but one other thing I saw Josh, who's the, uh, um, CEO of the uh, electronic electric coin company, um, he was tweeting about something they're working on where you can actually wrap assets in shielded Zcash transactions, which is super interesting because we'll have support for shielded Zcash transactions. It'll be interesting to see this feature roll once it does because you could see a thing where you could wrap a bat with, you know, in a shielded transaction and like, and, and do something more privately. Um, I was speaking with uh, somebody who was uh, big in user research over there. I think she's working for the foundation now over at Zcash. But like she was saying, like one of the biggest use cases they have is around payments and, um, and people just wanting to spend their Zcash to like have private payments. And so I think that, you know, we add this in, it's going to add in more opportunities to try more things out. Um, but like kind of getting it over the, the hump of like being integrated is the first step there. And, uh, you know, I'm super excited to see that because I think privacy coins are like going to get more and more big and like um, important. And, uh, you know, having private, you know, 
products, private browsers, like with this ability to do private transactions is pretty cool and differentiates. I mean, like if you think about it, like a lot of the different wallets are, are shipping a lot of the same features um, and differentiating from that. I mean, like, you know, you're, you're racing against a whole bunch of different conditions, right? Like um, our process is pretty set on like privacy and security reviews on all the code and, and making sure that what we're shipping is like, uh, uh, user first and, you know, not taking unnecessary shortcuts or risks or whatever, um, even though things happen in software development, but, uh, other, other projects or companies don't hold themselves to that. And so sometimes competing against or differentiating against those things is a little bit difficult, but one area that we're really good at is the privacy side of things. Like even with things that people don't even realize, I mean, like, um, you know, if you look at other products, they kind of default to like, capturing ip addresses and processing them and then you know the, the data collection is like such a prevalent thing that um that a lot of these developers just do it because that's what they're used to whereas like even small things like that brave doesn't handle it that way like wherever we can avoid data collecting data we don't and or processing it even and so i think that you know having that is our in our ethos and like kind of leaning in because it's also one thing i've I've been traveling a lot, talking to a lot of people and the folks that do know about the wallet, a lot of them say the same thing to me and I'd be curious to see what a broader, you know, sample would, would say, but like a lot of them were telling me, well, Hey, like I use brave wallet for the things I want to do like more privately. Um, and I use my regular wallet as a, as a daily driver. And it kind of got me thinking, you know, cause you have these, like this scenarios with, you know, browsers where you have private tabs or, uh, other profiles or things like that. And, you know, it could be that like, look, like I, wallets are super complicated. I'm just kind of, I'm not saying this is official policy or anything. I'm just saying like, you know, the more you get into the wallet space, the more you see the complexity of everything. Like there's token lists and all these different, you know, uh, EIPs and other network handling, blah, blah, blah. Like wallets are pretty complicated. Like sometimes like having an edge in this market means bringing something that's hard to, to replicate and and having solid privacy is like one of those things where it, it is trickier even at the first principles i mean if you look at like brave we're kind of fanatical about this like even the core browser code that we get from chromium you know the engineering and dev teams put a lot of work into like making sure that we're either proxying or like turning off unnecessary junk that would phone home to Google and, and all of that. Like, this is just a level of like caring about it that projects don't typically have, um, or even like, will like do the opposite because they can, you know, collect more data that way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think that, you know, as far as the properties of that go, um, you know, there are some ways we can look at this with some of these integrations over time that could be pretty interesting, but for the kind of vanilla just on chain, uh, payments, I think, you know, it's not going to be, have a privacy edge to it uh, initially, like for a few reasons because of the nature of it. But also, um, I think that, you know, the piece that we take a lot of care and have an applied in is like when you're in the ecosystem, like, uh, you know, the advertising side, all that stuff there, um, it doesn't, you know, it's all super private and, um, you know, it doesn't link back to the user, but I know that there's like an interest, like a strong interest from like Kyle and folks on our, um, security and privacy team around the wallet uh, for ways that we can make these things more private. So it's not something that's at the gate there, like uh, super strong, but it's something that we we always have an interest in privacy. That's what our kind of bread and butter is, right? So um, I think that uh, as with many things, the initial hump of getting this stuff out there is like super important. Once you get it out there, then the team can kind of tool on how we can improve these things and make them more private. I hope that helps. And we are right at time. So I'm going to call that good. And, and, uh, and, and we will be back one week from today. Same bad time, same bad channel. If you're in or around Las Vegas from Thursday to Saturday, please hit us up. We'd love to see you in person. Hold on. Have a good one. Thanks y'all. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.